my name is Elaine Weiner Reed. I am here at Slayton House for a collaboration with artists, musicians, and poets. Some of the musicians are classically trained and they will be bringing their violins and cello to our paintings to connect with the modern world, structured improvisation they call it. Over the years we've created this language between each other so while a lot of this is a little bit set out in its structure, uh, we leave a lot of the freedom to each other because we, we can trust and play with each other and that's kind of the really magical experience is being able to do this and I think especially when we have a subject like the paintings, it really focuses us so we really love doing this work because we can really channel our emotions and our way of interpreting these beautiful pieces of artwork. They helped us see our paintings in new ways. Once I finish a painting, which is my way of storytelling, it then needs to take new life being out in the world. How does my art sound? We had two evenings of this collaboration initiative where at least 10 poets shared their poems to my and my colleague and artist friend, April Rimpo's artwork. Um, first, I just want to say to Elaine and April, thank you so much. Um, I am just thrilled and amazed to be here. I had only seen electronic versions of everything, but the, the colors are really coming out in, in the real life. Writing is something that's very vulnerable for me, so it's hard to be in front of a room of people um, and share something that, you know, good work, <laughs> means something to you. Um, so this piece I found was absolutely beautiful, and I feel as women, we, we struggle with this constant, um, we need to look a certain way, we need to be a certain way, and there's all this pressure from society. And I came across this painting and I felt like, that's me looking in the mirror every day. Here I go again. I go to bed one minute after midnight. Three hours and 45 minutes later, I'm awakened by the onset of a stubborn and persistent poem. Beginning her day at an angle, ready to embrace life's gifts in a geometric world. Hands crossed in a dream state, possibly sullen or at peace. Is she swaddling a newborn or revisiting a memory? They have seen the green leaves fall, turn brown, sink to the ground, and birth again, having never died. So prayers left unanswered and hearts left broken, they parted and traveled so far. Ruby was married, had three lovely children, and Bernie was swept off to war. A blurred line in her perception of reality, a Blanche Dubois, a clink of a glass, a coin in a hat, that rise of an orchestra that no longer accompanies. I sought anonymity to begin again, but discovered instead how lonely a park bench could be. I can't pass you anywhere without seeing you sitting there. Still hurts to see you anymore. Every single thought of you, but no matter what I do, ain't no one can take your place. I can't stop thinking about you, baby, no matter what I try to do. It just leads me nowhere, trying to find someone who'd care half as much as I cared for you. I wonder if these ideals of where I'm going, who I am, what I've meant, are ever gonna make me into who I've wanted to be. Someone who isn't afraid to live out loud, to let their wheels leave the ground, to take their hands away from their eyes, stop gripping their own guts and say, yes, this is what vulnerability looks like. Shedding the skin of gods to show the silky comfort beneath. And isn't that just so much easier? With no one to lean on, I stand taller. With no one to shield me, perhaps I'll soar. Perhaps there is a superwoman living behind, behind the eyes in that glass. Perhaps there is a naive little girl, a bit broken from her past. Do I see what they see? My perception of this reflection changes day by day, but let them judge me as they will, because I don't care what they see anyway. <laughs> What is amazing 
is it takes guts to put your art out there, to put your voice, to put your music out there. The creative wave, the connections people made, even writers with each other, us with some writers. There was some interesting conversation about doing books together, inspiring each other and encouraging each other. We never know who it will touch or inspire or help someone perhaps get back on their feet when they hear about other people's experiences. I love that. Our creations will live beyond us. They've already touched us and all the people who I collaborate with, who I meet, they become part of my story now. And while they may not recognize themselves in future works, they're in there because they're inside me. So when people see a painting or they read a story, engage the imagination because your connection to that, whether you write about it, whether you blog about it, whether you create a song or do another painting, that is your representation of that message. Whether that voice takes shape in pen or at a typewriter, or on an easel or on the floor. It's all good and valuable and beautiful. And we should never be afraid to speak our own voice because it's the truest thing we have to offer the world. And we should do it respectfully and with honesty all the time because it's important.